I read recently that living off grid, homesteading, or just being self-sufficient is a hard life. It's a hard life sometimes, but it's also very re rewarding. And it comes with great satisfaction knowing that you've done something for yourself, by yourself, or with a partner, or however, and done something really good. We've been on this property almost seven years, and we have had so much work that we've done here. A lot of yard work. When we moved in, there were trees growing in the yard, and we couldn't even find the well because it was just so covered. And so little by little, we've kind of pecked away at the yard and the trees and all the brush and made it our own. And we're still working on it. It's probably never going to be a finished, done deal. There'll always be something and little changes that we'll want to make. Maybe even big changes, who knows. But these stumps that we have here, we cut these trees a few years ago and they finally rotted down enough so that we can get some of the stumps up. So that makes it easier for us to mow and also plow when we plow the snow in the winter time. This house was a foreclosure when we got it and it had sat at least four years empty and it just had a maintenance person that would come in and do a drive around uh, in the summer and make sure things were good and also in the winter time they would come in and plow uh, just a small path up around the house. So they weren't really interested in trying to keep up the property, just keeping it open and making sure nothing happened while they were waiting for somebody to buy it. This is the southern end of our property. The panels face in this direction gets the most of the sun through this direction and we are slowly working on trimming back some of the trees that have grown up in just seven years. They've really grown quite a bit. So little by little we're working on the landscape and digging up the old stumps and just taking down some of the trees that are blocking some of the sunlight that we uh, that is filtering the sun to get to the panels. This dirt that Scott is moving here is from down the driveway a ways. We had piles down there. He brought it up, just kept turning it over every week or so after the chickens had been dust bathing and digging in it. And now we're going to add it to the uh, compost piles that I have and consolidate everything. I probably won't be putting any compost in my beds until next spring so we're just going to get it all mixed in together and then we can add it in the springtime to the beds to top them off and give them fresh compost. Of course our crazy chickens have to get in on the action anytime the big orange chicken is on the move. They are underfoot trying to find out what we're digging up to see if they can find any bugs or whatever they're looking for. So they are always out and about when we're using the tractor and sometimes in the way. Building our own soil for our garden, our raised bed and in-ground garden that we have is very important to me. I use the chicken manure and also my rabbit manure and we mix it all in with leaf matter and 
uh, food scraps and whatever we have that we want to put in there and it's just been a really big help in the garden. It saves us money on buying loam or topsoil to mix in with it. Uh, it seems to break down really well where I have it and we have some really good soil just from our compost for the garden. The vegetables grow very well and we have done really well with that. So having this area open and be able to get to it with the tractor has been really great. Scott can get right in there and just flip the soil over and the compost over and get it all mixed in so it'll break down together. And then when I'm ready, I can put the soil in our garden beds. Part of maintaining our road into our house and the hill that comes up to our house we uh, it has to do with digging ditches and grading the driveway so that the rain water will shed off the way it's supposed to. It gets washed out on occasion about twice a year we have to go through and I say we actually Scott has to go through and fix the sides of the driveway to make sure the drainage is good and that it doesn't wash part of the driveway away. So here he's just uh, going sideways on the hill to our house and just putting in a little bit of a ditch for the rainwater to go down uh, through and not go across the top of the driveway and wash the rocks and gravel off to the other side. see here where it drains off down the driveway there's a little bit of a wash a washout area and it just travels down the side of the driveway there as it gets down to the more steeper part of the driveway down the hill it picks up and takes a little more of the dirt with it we've let some of the grass grow and that definitely helps but every once in a while he has to come in and Put in the ditches a little bit so that it will go around that corner and not down across the top of the driveway. Of course, having the right tools for your homestead is very important. These two for our tractor are important to us, one for the summer and one for the winter, or even spring for this one. The rock rake is very important 
to keep our driveway from washing away and getting the ruts out and just smoothing it out. Looks really great once Scott's done with it. The snow pusher is also important for our main winters. We get a lot of snow here and that takes care of a lot of our snow that we have and clears this nice big hill that we have off. So just having the right tools is important. Of course there are other ones that we are interested in getting uh, to use with the tractor that just cost money. So in the meantime we're going to use what we have and save up for those other tools that we'd like to have for our homestead. When someone says the benefits outweigh the risks, they mean to say what can be gained is much more significant than what might be lost or risked. I think that really applies to what we're doing here.